Yes, I'm the program director for the Integrated Nurse Leadership Program, which is a multi-million dollar grant that's been given to the University of California at San Francisco and the Center for Health Professions uh, by the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. Initially, it, uh, the goal was to, was quite vague in some regards, to create uh, leaders out of nurses and to provide the nurses with skills, tools, and resources to accomplish that. Now that in, it, in itself is a little bit vague uh, and hard to measure. So when I took over the grant, I put together a bit of a framework so that we could actually measure that sort of thing. So what we have now, what the Integrated Nurse Leadership Program is now, is an 18 month long intensive program geared primarily for nurses, although it's really open to frontline clinicians. And the main goal is to develop those leadership skills and to produce measurable improvement in patient care. Nurses deliver 85% of the care in hospitals. So they really are the frontline um, resource and they are, the, they are the last line of defense in producing safe care. So what you want is you want that nurse to be armed with with uh, a great deal of knowledge to be highly competent and to be very much in the know about what's going on in his or her environment. So that puts the nurse in a very central role. So because nurses deliver 85% of the care and they are in such central roles, it's very important that we see them as such important caregivers and that we provide them with those skills, tools, and resources that really historically haven't been provided in the past. So that's my understanding of why the Moore Foundation you know, wanted to give all this money to nurses in the Bay Area. And it's making a huge difference. We've been given two grants now by the Moore Foundation. In the first grant, uh, one of our biggest uh, success stories is in the area of medication safety. Now, medication safety is the largest slice of the medical error pie. You may not know that. It makes sense because medications are delivered so uh, frequently in hospitals. On an eight-hour shift, the average nurse in the Bay Area will administer about 70 medications. So that's one nurse in seven, one nurse in eight hours. So that's about 70 medications, so that's a lot. That's a lot of volume. Uh, in the first phase of the work, we improved the reliability of medication administration by 78%, which is a huge and significant improvement. Uh, so every day, these nurses are making, basically making care safer. In the 18-month program, we had uh, eight hospitals participate. Those hospitals that are all participating in medication are still on board. In fact, I added one. So we have nine hospitals. Those nine hospitals are all working on medication safety, as I mentioned. That represents uh, 63 units, 63 hospital units in the Bay Area. That's, um, that's a lot of patient care. That's a lot of nurses. Uh, it's probably, uh, I'm guessing a little bit, maybe about, uh, we have about 250 people in that, in that group, the nine hospitals that are working actively on this. Yeah, we also have another set of hospitals, another set of eight hospitals, taking this same 18-month long framework and applying it to a different clinical problem, uh, which has to do with managing and improving infections uh, known as sepsis for patients. So uh, it's touching, this work is touching uh, currently probably about 500 clinicians in the Bay Area. My hope and dream for the future is, is partly being realized now, which is to make the Bay Area a source of excellence of nursing that other regions look at, they look at as an example. So people, when other university systems or other regions look and they say, well, give me, show me an example of excellence in nursing and excellence in patient care, they, they automatically think of the Bay Area and they automatically think of of the work that is going on with the Integrated Nurse Leadership Program and all the other work activity that the Moore Foundation in this regard is, is funding. Nurses uh, by, and by far numbers are the uh, vast majority of healthcare providers. Um, 
there are just hundreds and thousands of us everywhere. And really, the, the, nurse, the nurse has a, an extremely central role in the delivery of patient care. Um, as I mentioned, they deliver 85% of the care. They are the frontline operators, if you will, meaning that they're the closest to the problem. They're the closest to seeing any problems in care delivery. They're the ones then that are naturally set up to be the problem solvers uh, of, of, of healthcare. So that if we can continue to provide them with this sort of training, leadership um, training, uh, skill training, tool training, then they will be expertly set up to solve those problems um, from now into the future. The nurse is the care coordinator, is the one to, I, of, I often call nurses sense makers. They're the ones that have to make sense of their environment and of, of the patient's environment. So they're the ones who step back every day and say, uh, okay, Mrs. Jones, for example, has a lab uh, or a procedure ordered. Is this the right lab? Is this the right procedure? Well, I noticed yesterday that Mrs. Jones had this procedure. Is she supposed to get it again? Maybe this is not supposed to happen. And there's often with the with uh, different professions like the physicians or the physical therapists, uh, any number of, of those individuals come into the patient's room or in a co patient contact and they have different opinions and it's the nurse who actually has to synthesize that and make sense of it. So the more skills and resources that you can pro provide to that nurse so that they really understand that role and their role in managing all that, so that work, uh, I think it makes, it is the linchpin to improving uh, patient outcome, patient experience, and operational efficiencies too because it's the nurse who understands what makes sense and what doesn't make sense, what's working, what doesn't work. You know, we have a lot of groundhog days, I call it, in, um, in healthcare and in hospitals where one day you come in, it's the same day like the day before, and let's say uh, uh, it's 8 p.m. and you can't find any uh, uh, syringes, right, because they've they've run out because they always run out because there's never enough. So you end up having to, every single day, just like the day before, problem solve that. And so if we can get to uh, create some room, which is what we do in this grant, create some room so that the nurses can solve that and fix that, then they're not troubled by that. And it's a small example, except that this sort of thing happens all the time in hospitals. And it's all these little things that add up to a lot of inefficiency in care and a lot of wasted time and a lot of time away from the patient. So getting to the root cause and removing the Groundhog Day phenomenon is, I think, another component. The Moore Foundation has catalyzed, I think, a really important movement that I'm starting to see in the Bay Area. And let me give you a very concrete example. Uh, uh, I uh, very early on realized that there was a lot of interest in this sort of leadership training, but the way that we had structured the grant to have so many teams from each hospital, et cetera, we couldn't, I couldn't ex uh, accommodate all the people, all the nurses that wanted to get involved. So I started an applied professional society called the Regional Nurse Network. It's run through the, the grant, and because of the raw interest and excitement that nurses have to fundamentally improve patient care. Uh, this society now has over 2,400 members and represents over 160 organizations So there are, and, and departments. So there are, there are about 40 hospitals in the Bay Area. So the fact that we have 160 organizations means that there is a draw from nursing schools, from prison systems, from outpatient departments, these sorts of other places where people really want to get involved. And we're through the Moore Foundation and through the money that they've provided and the ability to allow these, um, these raw excitements to catch fire, we have been able to really identify that, that these nurses really want to move into a more visible and collaborative role in the healthcare arena. And we're being able to leverage that and create real improvement. I wanted to say that uh, with the grant, there's two, two areas that I focus on and I try to marry together at all times. And one is the individual nurses' uh, professional development. And uh, in, the, in the first phase of the grant, when I surveyed nurses after they had been in it for about a year, 85% of them said they had taken on new leadership responsibilities, either formal or informal. 
Uh, and I think that that goal of mine of really trying to 